Hi, I'm Josephine Moon. Welcome to The Hot Seat. Today I have debut Brisbane author Luke Rutledge joining me. Welcome, Luke. Thank you very much, Joe. Nice to be here. It's great to have you here. Would you like to start by telling us all a bit about your new book? Yes, uh, well, here it is. Um, actually, I just got my copy today in the mail, so very, very excited. Um, it's called A Man and His Pride. Um, and A Man and His Pride is about Sean Preston, um, who is a 26-year-old uh, gay man living in Brisbane. Uh, and it's set during the 2017 um, same-sex marriage uh, plebiscite. So when we first meet Sean, he's just been dumped by his boyfriend of three months in a very brutal way. Um, and so he falls into his old habits of um, drinking a lot, um, you know, having a lot of random sort of casual sex that leaves him feeling empty. Uh, and he's also spending a lot of time at the gym, um, far, far too much time at the gym. <laughs> um, but then everything starts to change when Sean meets a guy called William. Um, and William is in many ways the complete opposite of Sean. Um, he's very open and proud about the fact that he's gay. He's got a long history of long-term relationships, um, but he's also very naive when it comes to the gay dating scene. And so um, the two of them, Sean and William, they sort of decide to help each other out a bit and uh, an unlikely friendship starts to blossom. So it's a story about... Um, finding your pride, um, learning to love and accept yourself for who you are. Um, it's also a story about unresolved trauma and overcoming um, some of the demons of your past. And finally, it's a story about um, this friendship between these two gay men. So, yeah, that's that's a man and his pride in a nutshell. Uh, when was the moment, do you think, when was the moment that you realised you wanted to be a writer? Um, so I have a very vivid memory of this and I was in grade six and it was during the three year gap between the fourth and the fifth Harry Potter books being published. And I remember one summer I was, I was feeling really impatient for the fifth Harry Potter book to come out. It had been years and there was kind of nothing. So I decided, um, to write the fifth Harry Potter book myself. <laughs> and of course, you know, I was in grade six, so it was just a complete ripoff, um, and not very good, but, I remember feeling this kind of feeling of utter satisfaction from producing a story and, um, you know, sharing it with my family and friends. And so I just sort of kept writing and, and started to come up with my own stories. Um, and I think that's probably when I decided that I wanted to be a writer. I love that story. I have a similar moment when I was nine, I was addicted to the um, Silver Brumby series. And uh, so yeah. having run out of Silver Brumby, I wrote my own version of a Silver Brumby book. So there you go. There you, there go. you go. We model, we just model our stories, you know, to begin with on things we love. So yeah, yeah. I love that. That's great. Hmm. So when then in that process of starting to write and write the stories you love, when was the moment when you knew that this was the book you needed to write? Um, so in my late 20s, I, I had been writing a few YA manuscripts for a number of years, and that sort of followed a period in my life where I was struggling a lot with uh, my sexuality and, and coming out. Um, but then after I, I guess I got over that period and sort of landed a bit, um, I, that's when I started to write YA manuscripts, and I, I wasn't writing in that period prior to that, I'd sort of stopped. Um, and so then I got a bit of feedback from um, an agent who, uh, on the last manuscript that I had written, who sort of said um, that I should consider toning down some of the more adult content um, that I was trying to, that I was um, including in, in the story um, uh, to try and make it a bit more accessible for a younger audience. So I sort of thought about that for a while um, and then I sort of thought, well, I'm not really reading YA anymore. I'm kind of just reading adult novels. Um, so that's when I decided to write uh, my first adult novel, which would become A Man and His Pride. Um, and so in thinking about then what I wanted to write, I, I knew that I wanted to write 
about a man who was gay and have it revolve around his sexuality in some way. But I didn't want to write another coming out story, uh, which is kind of what I was focusing a lot on with the YA manuscripts that I'd been working on. Um, and so I sort of thought, well, what comes next? What comes after the coming out moment? Um, and I think, you know, there's this whole grey area between being in the closet and being out and proud. Um, and I think it's something, it's kind of a state of mind that is not really talked about as much, maybe, this whole idea of finding your pride. Um, so, yeah, that's that's kind of where the inspiration, I guess, for the story came from. Yeah. And it takes a long time to write a book and and often it goes on a long journey like that. During that time, did you develop any specific rituals or things you need to do to get into the space to write this book? Um, not really. I, I don't have any rituals per se. Um, I I write in the mornings. Um, I get up early at like five o'clock in the morning or something. Um, and I mean, really the only things that I do before I sit down and just start writing is make a coffee and, and feed the dog. Um, so my writing process or um, routine is kind of straightforward really it's uncomplicated there's nothing that I really need other than I just need to be alone <laughs> I can't have people around me even if they're not bothering me um, I can't have the tv going because um, you know like so often part of the writing is me just sitting in the chair just kind of staring into the distance and thinking and so I think if I have people around me I, I just feel too self-conscious of that so I yeah I just I just need to be alone um and just have my own space really um but one of my favorite places to write is um the Queensland State Library here in Brisbane um I yeah I just often find I'm most productive when I go there it's a lovely space it looks out over the river and the city and um yeah I go there as often as I can <laughs> yeah it's certainly got a great view out of those windows yeah. that's for sure um what is the one book you've read in your life where you've, you've sort of read it and gone oh man I wish I'd written that book yeah, um, I think it's a hard one because like every book that I read that I enjoy, there's inevitably something in it that I wish that I'd thought of. So whether it's like a a funny joke or like it's you know it's a really funny book, and then and then you think, oh, I wish that my writing was this funny, or it's like a really good plot twist or something like that. Um, but if I had to identify one book, I guess I'd go to one of my favourite books, uh, which is Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine. And there's just something about that book and the main character where you just sympathise so much with her and you just, you want her to get better. And I've read that book a few times now and every time it just leaves me feeling um, so uplifted and um, happy, I suppose, so, yeah, I suppose that would be the book that I would choose. Yeah, it's a crowd favourite, that one. It's it a is. Book in the world, yeah. For sure. Yep. Okay. If you could have your book adapted to screen, who would you cast to play the main characters? Um, so the only reason why I have an answer to this is because I knew you were going to ask me, but normally I, I, I don't cast my characters in my head at all, really, like I don't. Um, think about actors in that you know in, in that way but I suppose for Sean um, I was thinking maybe like Liam Hemsworth someone like that um, it, it, they would have to be Australian um, or be able to do a really good Australian accent because it is a very Australian story um, but then also like I would want him to be played by someone who's gay. So I don't know if Liam Hemsworth would really work for that. Um, but then the only other person that I thought of for the for the mother, um, so Sean's mother, she's she's not a very nice character at all. Um, in fact, she's pretty horrible to him. Um, but there's also a lot going on beneath the surface with her. Um, so I sort of thought of um, Jackie Weaver. Um, as an option, I thought she might be good to play the mother. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nice choices. I don't think too many people would um, would complain about Liam playing. No, he's nice to look at, so that's, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what are you reading at the moment? Um, so I'm re reading a book. <clears throat> 
sorry, called Dog Days by Erica Waller. Um, and honestly, I'm only 20 pages in, um, so I can't really tell you what it's about. But on the back cover, it says that it is for people who enjoyed um, Eleanor Oliphant or A Man Called Over. Um, so they're, you know, obviously Eleanor, one of my favourite books. So, um, but that's going well. And then I also just read um, Graham Norton's A Keeper, uh, which was surprisingly deep and moving. Um, so I would recommend that book to anyone that likes a good page turner. Mm. Right. And what are you working on at the moment? Um, so I am working my way through the first draft of another adult novel. Um, and I'm still at that point. It, it's another um yeah, it's, it's another novel that centers around a, a gay character. Um, but I'm at that point with it where I'm still not quite sure w- what it is that I'm trying to say. You know, in that first draft where you, it's like a process of working out what the hell it is that this book is actually about. So I'm still at that point with it and I'm nearing the end, but um, I, I don't have the words quite at the moment to talk about it and and to describe what it is because I'm not actually sure myself. Yeah, I can totally empathise with that. I am the same. My, my first drafts are very much discovery drafts and I don't know what it's going to be until I get to the end. So that's It's a very scary process. Yeah, yeah, perfectly normal to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining us in the hot seat today. It's been great to talk to you and learn more about your new book and I hope it does really, really well for you. Thank you so much, Joe, and thank you for having me. No problems. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye. Bye.